greetings. Uh, occasionally, when perusing discussions about Hebrew Israelites, paternal lineages, and DNA, I'll see someone triumphantly declare that no sample of E1B1A has been found in the Levant. Now, in private conversations over the last couple of years, I've told a few different people that I don't think it's particularly prudent to lean so enthusiastically into that sort of polemic, as I honestly think that it's nigh inevitable that ancient samples of E1B1A will eventually be found in the Levant. And, you know, I've previously thought about making a brief video on this topic, sharing my thoughts, sharing my reasoning, but, uh, you know, I've never got around to it. However, today, someone asked me in a public Facebook thread if I think samples of E1B1A dating to before 70 AD will be found in the Levant. So it seemed to me like now would be an auspicious time to go ahead with that video idea. And here we are. So, as I explained in that thread, as well as in previous Facebook threads, I think one easy illustration of this likelihood can be pulled up when using the map tab on the SNP tracker over at Scaled Innovation, you know, the Scaled Innovation website. And I'll share a link to this tool in the video description. Uh, now, when you're on this page, you simply put in E-V38 in the, in the search at the top of the screen. Then make sure the gender icon is set to male and click go. And at that point, you get this map, which provides a speculative origin point for EV38. And once you have that, you go to the top of the page and click these three bars on the right. And when you do that, you'll get this drop-down menu, at which point you'll want to click on the Show Descendants option. Once you do that, the map then plots where different downstream subclades of E1B1A have been found. And honestly, it makes for quite the spectrum, right? Because it, it shows that ancient samples of subclades of E1B1A have been found all over the place. Rather than being restricted to just West Africa, samples have been found in Europe, in North, Northeast Africa, and in parts of West Asia, both, you know, which are both Southeast and Northeast of the Levant. You know, in short, samples of subclades of E1B1A have been found at various points on opposite sides of the Levant. In a sense, they collectively surround the Levant. And while it's possible that E1B1A carriers went around the Levant, somehow circumvented the Levant when traveling to those different points, I honestly think it's more likely that E1B1A carriers being on opposite sides of the Levant entails that those E1B1A carriers moved through the Levant. You know, honestly, it's a plausible, even probable route from one point to another. And that's why I think this is a good illustration of why it's likely that eventually ancient samples of E1B1A will be found in the Levant. And when I shared this line of reasoning with the person who asked me the question, he replied that if even one sample of E1B1A is found in the Levant, he'll proclaim the quote-unquote BHIs to be true Israelites. And I felt that that was worth documenting as this is an example, uh, perhaps a rather glaring example of, you know, a moment when hasty reasoning, which was tacit, becomes explicit. Now, if a sample is found, at that point, this person might have egg on his face, and only then he might trot out, sort, you know, what will seem like post hoc uh, objections. You know, for example, he might object that just because the haplogroup is found in the Levant, that doesn't mean it was Jacob's haplogroup, right? And, you know, for example, I would actually agree with that because, you know, for example, there are ancient samples of E1B1B, J1, J2, and R, which have been found in the ancient Levant. There was even a sample of Q, which was found in what's now Lebanon. And, you know, so honestly, it would seem wiser to raise such points rather than put forth these, the sort of confident gamble that you see on your screen. You know, if these sorts of points are only raised after a sample of E1B1A is found, at that point, it's going to seem awkward. Like I alluded to a moment ago, it's going to seem post hoc. Now, on a closing note, I would ask that everyone keep in mind that there were hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people who either resided in or moved through the ancient Levant. Therefore, the dozens of samples which we currently have only represent a small fragment of that spectrum. And for that reason, we should take it for granted that our collection of samples and with it our understanding of the ancient Levant is going to expand, evolve, and diversify. Food for thought. And on that note, I'll close this video here. As always, I welcome any comments, questions, or criticisms. I don't censor anyone here, so feel free to share your thoughts, whether positive or negative. And on that note, God bless.